Here we go with the legendary Xenon 2 Mega Blast. Now, is it only legendary because of the Bomb the Bass soundtrack? Released on the Amiga in August 1989, Xenon 2 was something special. The beautiful drawn sprites coupled with the thumping music really made it stand out. Dave Whittaker was responsible for converting Tin Simmons, aka Bomb the Bases, Mega Blast to the Amiga and what a great job he did. The game starts with a pretty cool remake of the song. It's far from perfect and so much lower in fidelity to the original song, but it is all there, for the most part, and mighty impressive. The actual in-game music though is a much simpler version of the Mega Blast track. It may as well not be present at all though, due to the sound effects basically taking priority over the music, as they battle for the use of the Amiga's sound channels. Still, at least the effort was made. Sadly, besides the music, Xenon 2 doesn't have much going for it. As a shooter, it's severely flawed. The pace is slow, level design is terrible, with shit flying all over the place. Enemies are too strong, and it's difficult to know where their hitboxes are in many cases. Add in the fact that every stage looks similar to the previous one, and we have a very tedious and dull shooter. I know many people love this game, as I did back in 1989, but once we take off those rose tinted glasses and look at Xenon 2 with our own eyes, we see a game that was definitely a victim of style over substance. Next up is the Atari ST version. It's nice to see the ST get some sample playback of the Amiga loading music, even if it is a lot shorter, despite the weaker sound hardware. The in-game music is reasonable too, or it would be if you could hear it. The ST port of Xenon 2 is basically the same as the Amiga version in terms of looks. There's nothing that really stands out between the two versions. The gameplay is also the same. Nothing has changed there. So you could say that the ST version is just as good as the Amiga version if you played both with the sound off. MS-DOS players. Now I'm not sure if there was a CD-ROM version of this game for DOS, but I can tell you that the audio of the floppy version is terrible. PC speaker only it would seem. It's also funny that the default setting for the music is set to off. The developers of this port knew it was bad. The in-game graphics are quite nice. They look sharper than the Amiga and ST, but the play areas are missing the parallax layer of... Um, Weeds, I guess I could call them. That's what they look like to me. Space weeds. So yeah, the MS-DOS port sounds really bad and is missing graphical features. No zooming text for instance. But its overall appearance seems to be sharper.
Here's a nice surprise, Xenon 2 was also ported to the Acorn Archimedes, and it's better than the original. Yes, it's true. It has the higher resolution graphics from the PC version, but now complete with the correct parallax scrolling. It has music that doesn't disappear when playing the game, and most importantly, the playability has been improved by making the enemy hitboxes easier to hit, or at least it seems that way. Even little touches such as the zoom in text is smoother. Sadly, for the life of me, I couldn't get the up direction to work. This isn't a problem with the game, but one with my setup. Now I bet you never expected Xenon 2 to be ported to the Sharp X68000. I know I sure didn't expect that, but I can say that I'm really loving the FM recreation of Mega Blast. While it's not as full with samples, it is really cool. But that's not the coolest point, oh no. The Sharp version is faster, and what would you know? This actually makes the game more fun. Seriously, that little boost in speed makes all the difference. The X68000 port also comes with a special mode. As far as I can tell, it's exactly the same as the original mode, but now with an original soundtrack, which while good, just doesn't fit this game. to move on to the consoles with the Mega Drive port. This piss poor effort was programmed by Devil and Sorel, and apparently the original developers, the assembly line. All I can say is neither of them know how to program the Mega Drive's Yamaha FM sound chip. This game sounds ear personally bad. Harsh instruments, poor sound effects, and no voice samples at all. The looks aren't much better. The graphics should have looked as good as the Amiga, but instead look washed out, lack animation and squashed. The only saving grace this port has is the difficulty setting, allowing the game to be played on easy or hard for the hardcore players out there.
Xenon 2 also made its way to the Sega Master System. I think you'd have to admit that it does look pretty good considering the limitations of the Master System's colour palette, and the amount of sprites it can move about without flicker. I'd even say that the music is more pleasant than the Mega Drive version. There are things missing from this Master System port, most noticeably being the lack of currency pickups. This also means there's no shop in this version. Still, it's not the end of the world. never going to get Xenon 2 looking right on the Game Boy due to the monochrome screen and the low resolution, so I take my hat off to Teeny Weeny Games for even attempting this port, let alone producing a reasonable version of Xenon 2 for Nintendo's classic handheld. Man, they even managed to keep the shop and mega powered up, something the Master System was lacking. Xenon 2 running side by side. 